Hello again, Pastor Rick here from Zion Lutheran Church. Today we are looking at reading Matthew in Lent, uh, chapter 25. Now, I wanted to explain something right off the bat. Yesterday uh, we read chapter 24, and in chapter 24 we talked about the, uh, the destruction of the temple, well, the signs of the close of the age. We talked about the abomination of desolation and the coming of the Son of Man. And we also spoke how Jesus said that no one, not even he in his humility, knew or knows when he's going to be returning. Only God knows. Now, doesn't mean he won't know. When he is no longer in his humiliation, when he is in his glory, when he is one with the Father, then he'll know, but he's not on earth at that point, not any longer. So he knows, like I say, in his glory when he's coming, but in his humiliation on earth, he was not able to, to give a place or a time. Now, I, I talked about yesterday how maybe I would do an in-depth review of this chapter 24 because there's a lot of stuff in there that sometimes confuses a lot of people it's the end time it's it's uh it's talk of that kind of thing and and some people find that a bit confusing and and it can be very confusing um especially in this case because jesus and the disciples are talking about two very distinct events they're talking about destruction of the temple and then they're also talking about the coming judgment. Now, the disciples thought that those two things would happen at the same time, that when the, the temple was destroyed, Jesus would be returning. But Jesus tells them that, you know, yes, this temple is going to be destroyed, and these are some of the things that might happen to you. And for um, at least one of the disciples, uh, was alive to see the destruction of the temple, that being John. I believe maybe all of the others had been martyred by that time. But in 70 AD, the Romans came in and they absolutely leveled it. Um, the, the, uh, the temple had a gold-clad roof and they burned the temple down. It got so hot that all of the gold melted and the gold went into the cracks of the stone and they took an removed each stone one from on top of another to retrieve the gold that's why there was no stone left unturned um so it was a it was a pretty devastating thing for the temple um i was reading in some of the stuff that uh they uh in 1968 they dug up some of the stones that had been a part of that temple they were um i think 37 feet long 18 feet wide and 10 feet high or 10 feet wide and 18 feet high. They were huge. And you can imagine what that must have looked like to those people. Um, I, in going through that, realized that it's going to take and would take a whole lot longer than the 15 or even 20 minutes that we like to keep these videos to, to go through chapter 24 and do it justice so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a big note i've actually got a post-it that's going to go on my monitor and once we're done with reading matthew and lent we're going to go back to chapter 24 um, we may look at chapter 25 and and we're going to go through it um, verse by verse and, and try and uh, help you to nail down and understand what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about the coming of the Son of Man and how no one will know the time and what the signs of the end of the age are. Um, because like I say, I really, I, I, I'm sometimes pretty good at explaining things, but to do the whole chapter in 20 minutes would not do anybody justice and I think it might just be confusing so I am uh, like I say I'm gonna make a note I've got the post it right here and when we're done with Easter when we're working in April um, we are going to maybe take a week 
and go through chapter 24 and chapter 25 of Matthew. And then we may also look into uh, Mark and Luke and their comparable gospels um, of this. Um, one of the things that Matthew didn't say in 24 was what, where they were. And, and Mark tells us that they're sitting on the hill uh, on the Mount of Olives when they ask Jesus the question about um, you know, the destruction of the temple, when's this going to happen, and when is the end of the age. So they would have actually been sitting above Jerusalem looking down onto the temple site itself, which would have been pretty impressive. So, uh, so like I say, we're going to save that. And, um, and if you uh, would like, like I say, I will, I will do that in April. I think it would be a worthwhile study, um, kind of like a Bible study. And uh, we would just go through it um, pretty much verse by verse almost, or at least section by section and, and, and really dig into it. You know, when we talk about the, uh, the abomination of desolation and we start talking about that and we get into uh, the Antichrist and things like that, sometimes people are confused about who or what the Antichrist is. And, uh, and if we look at our Lutheran confessions, uh, a lot of that stuff is addressed. And uh, some people don't necessarily hold to it too well today, but we will certainly take a look at that. And, and talk about, uh, well, what Luther and what some of the early uh, church fathers, at least the Lutheran church fathers and the Lutheran church and Lutheran confessions uh, thought about that and how they talked about it. I got that doggone sun coming from the blind again here and trying to find a spot where I'm not out of the picture and not being blinded is a bit of a challenge. So anyway, enough of that. We're uh, six minutes in already. Uh, let me read uh, chapter... 25, and it is kind of a continuation of chapter 24. Um, there's no break in the, in the reading. Um, chapter 24 ends with Jesus telling us about uh, how no one knows the date and the hour, and then from there he flows right into the parable of the ten virgins. Like I say, there is no break in that. So he continues. This is Jesus speaking. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called the servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, 
Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been much faith, faithful over little, and I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you do not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant! You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have scattered no seed? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did them minister to you? And he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Well, most of you that know me know that that final judgment reading is one of my favorites in Scripture. That separation of the sheep and the goats and... Uh, one of the things that stands out to me as this is the end time, this is the final judgment. Um, and guess what? Um, what did we have to do in that judgment? We had to do nothing. We were divided into the groups of sheep and goats. We didn't have to answer any questions. We didn't have to stand before anyone. We were separated as he gathered them. So what makes the separation? Well, it's based on our faith. It's based on our love of Christ and the fact that he has given everything for us. And because of that, I've repeated it time and time again, we do the good works that God prepared for us before the foundation of the world. And what are those good works? Well, apparently, a lot of times, we don't even know that we do them. Because we do the good works not for recognition, 
We do the good works not to be saved, because we've already been saved. There's nothing we can do to save ourselves. Christ has already saved us. So we do the good works because of who we are and what we are, not because of what we want to be. Um, then those who are on the goat side, well, they say, when did we not feed you? When did we not? Well, you know, he say, hey, you know, it's when you didn't do this to the least of these. And, you know, their salvation isn't based totally it's not based on the fact that they did or didn't do works it was that there it was based on their righteousness right because it says these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal heaven because of Christ's righteousness that is spread on us or shared with us or imbued into us or given to us, we are saved. And because we are saved, we do the things that he says. We do them to the point where we don't even know that we've done them. So it's Christ's righteousness that saves us and separates us. We don't have, we don't you know, the, the decision and the, the separation has already been made. Uh, parable of the talents, kind of the same thing. Uh, I got in trouble one time because I, I, I used the, the definition talents. Pardon me, this sun is getting me. Um, talents, you know, these talents that, that they were given was a, a monetary denomination. Uh, a talent, I believe... I can't remember if it was a year's wages or a month's wages. Either way, uh, 7,300 denarii. Uh, so, yeah, so it will be about 30 times uh, uh, more valuable than, well, that was gold is 30 times more valuable than silver. Anyways, uh, a denarius a day was one, one day's wages. A talent was 7,300 uh, denarius. So, you know, so... 7,300 days wages. It's a lot of money. Um, but I compared talents to talents that we have been given as the redeemed in Christ. We all have talents. Paul talks about all our talents. We don't all have the same talents. We all have gifts from God, and we need to use our talents. If we hide our talents, if we don't use our talents, that's when we uh, are, aren't following what the Lord is saying. So we need to uh, do that. And, and like I say, I've, I've, I've gotten some, some flack sometimes for comparing our talents to the talents of gold. But I, I do believe there's a little bit of a correlation anyway. Because sometimes we have a hard time uh, visualizing talents in regards to uh, the, the monetary denomination. So anyway, that being said, that's enough on that. Um, like I say, when I do the uh, study, maybe we'll throw uh, chapter 25 into um, into the mix for that talk about the uh, you know the end times and the, the coming of Christ and, and that type of thing because all of that is tied together. So um, let's see, tomorrow's Wednesday, so we've got uh, church tomorrow night. It's the last of our Wednesday night series. Uh, tomorrow night we are in uh, Pilate's uh, judgment chamber. That's where we are tomorrow night. And then this coming Sunday, of course, is Palm Sunday. And there we're going to be in Bethpage as uh, Jesus makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So uh, we'll pick up on chapter 26 on Thursday. I think we'll also look at John on Friday and then chapter 27 on Saturday, and then I think John on Monday, and chapter 28, um, chapter 28, I think I'm going to save for like Saturday, so I might squeeze some other stuff in there. So anyway, if 
you have any questions, thoughts, comments, let me know. Look at that. I didn't even explain anything really deep, and we already ran into 20 minutes. So sorry about that. I hope you enjoy it. I, uh, if you got any questions, let me know. Sorry about rambling. Um, hope you got something out of it. I will talk to you real soon. Uh, be happy, be healthy, be kind, be faithful, be cheerful, be loving, be neighborly, be giving, but especially be ever watchful for the return of our Savior. Have a great day, and God bless.